Hello, this is Wampire here to talk about Bruce Lee once again. Um, this time around, I want to talk about if Bruce Lee actually fought, how would he actually fight? Like, what would it look like? <laughs> and, and the reason why I bring this up is because I just saw a YouTube video the other day and uh, it was where Joe Rogan said that if Gene LaBelle and Bruce Lee had fought, that Gene LaBelle would beat Bruce Lee. And that just got me thinking, you know, um, about this topic right here. Because I feel like a lot of people, um, they're not understanding uh, Bruce Lee's fighting method, so to speak, you know. Um, f first of all, okay, I, I want to say that Bruce Lee trained really, really hard. I mean, it's, it's obvious, and we have notes that say what actually he, he did with his training regimen. What was it actually like? Like, that's all described. And we know he cross-trained with some of the elite best professional martial arts athletes of his era, of his time. For example, Chuck Norris, Mike Stone, and Joe Lewis. Those were some of the top guys. And uh, he, he cross-trained with them. So we know that he knows what it takes to become a pro martial arts athlete at that time. And we also know, this is to me very important, that he was not interested in sport. Okay, he wasn't. He, he made it very clear. He's told people, like he told Professor Danny Santo, you know. And so he was basically training real hard as a professional athlete on the level of a professional athlete for a sport that didn't exist at the time. He, he was training like a pro athlete, but at the time what Chuck Norris, Mike Stone, and Joe Lewis were doing was semi-full contact. It wasn't full contact. But they were, that group, along with Bruce Lee included, they were trying to go to full contact. They, they were going in that direction, and it didn't exist at the time. The only places where that existed was boxing and wrestling in the U.S., and boxing and wrestling is highly, highly restricted. So, you know, Bruce Lee lived in that era, and he was trying to make that change, right? And I think the people today, when they're talking about like, okay, was Bruce Lee just a movie guy? Was this guy for real or what? A, you're forgetting that he trained like a pro athlete and he did train with pro athletes. So once again, he understood what it takes to become a pro athlete. Not saying that, yeah, he doesn't have a record. That's been beaten to a horse. We all know that, that he never competed. Why didn't he compete? Because he's not into it. So you can't deny that he trained like a pro athlete. That's number one. It's written down. You could look it up. And then number two is that he was not interested in sport. So what he was doing was street, right? So, so then the next part, the next part, what, what we need to understand here, because people constantly you know, putting him up like with like today's MMA world champions and stuff. How would he have done in the UFC if he fights Michael Jai White, if he fights Mike Tyson, if he fights Muhammad Ali in the UFC? You're all putting it in an MMA. But remember, this guy is, even though what he was doing was encompassing everything, it's still, it's not MMA is what he was doing. You know, yes, I know he was credited. A lot of people credit him for, for doing MMA before MMA, you know, which, yeah, he was one of those people doing that kind of stuff. But it's still not MMA. 
we have to make that very very clear you know so then what what the heck <laughs> what what the heck was he doing and it was it was street it was street fight essentially is what he was doing he wanted to be the number one street fighter on the planet earth so on a one on one fight right where there are no rules he wanted to dominate in that and he did not want to use weapons I, I know he made the nunchuck famous but he didn't want to use weapons and he wanted to be the most dominating dude there is in a street fight on planet earth and uh, to me that is what I believe he was trying to do you you have to define okay so that's not MMA that's different so the next thing logically we need to go to is is a comment that UFC um, ex-champion and MMA legend Boss Rutten said who Boss Rutten my understanding is a huge Bruce Lee fan and um, Boss Rutten said that um, because there's been critics towards MMA and, and these people will say like, well, you know, that's a sport. And on the street, you could bite, you could eye gouge, you could headbutt, you could do the 12 o'clock elbows or, or whatever. But in the, in the UFC, all that is illegal, right? Well, this is where Boss Rutten will say, you know, well, look, at the end of the day, I'm a professional fighter. And um, being a professional fighter means that I'm going to, fight better than you so i'll be in much better position to do those things if i wanted to so if i wanted to eye gouge you or if i wanted to bite you i'm going to be in way better position than you so if that's all you got you're in trouble and so an mma fighter has it tough because they're not allowed to do those things if they did it would the end they could end the match much quicker but they're not so you know they're used to harder situations so I, I completely agree with Boss Rutten, completely, and it makes total sense to me. That being said, to me, Bruce Lee is a completely different animal. So um, what Boss Rutten is saying to me is if you get a normal guy and another normal guy, so two normal guys are going to fight each other, but one guy has a bag of tricks where they're all illegal moves, who's going to win? Well, when two normal guys fight and one guy has a bunch of dirty moves, that guy's going to win, obviously. But then what Boss Rutten, Boss Rutten didn't say that, but I'm just logically assuming that that's part of the equation. What Boss Rutten did say is if you get a guy, a normal guy with bag of tricks versus a pro athlete, a professional fighter, it's no contest. The, pro, the professional fighter is going to win. And I agree with him. I 100 because it's a at the end of the day it's a professional fighter versus a normal person. Whether this person has a bag of tricks of dirty moves, yes or no, it doesn't matter. It's a professional fighter versus a normal person. So I'm putting my money on the professional fighter, right? So what I'm saying with Bruce Lee is here is a guy who trains like a pro fighter. So he's at the level of a pro fighter. Yes, he didn't compete, so we don't know exactly how good he would have been. Would he have been champion, or would he have been a legendary champion, like a guy who won 10 bouts in a row, or would he have been a Hall of Famer? Who knows? We don't know. We could speculate, but, you know, really, it's ridiculous, because we don't know. What we do know for sure is that he trained like a pro athlete at the time. Okay. So we're talking about a guy who is at the level of a pro athlete with dirty moves, with the bag of tricks. That's not the same as a regular guy with a bunch of dirty tricks. Okay, so that, that's what I want to say. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so if Bruce Lee fought Chuck Norris in the UFC, both in their primes, right in the UFC right pro athlete versus someone who trains at pro athlete level but untested that's Bruce Lee he's untested 
right? But trains at that level, okay? So technically, on paper, stamina-wise, he should be okay, but, you know, managing the stamina under pressure, how he has the, you know, the mindset in a fight and all that is, is all, it's untested. We don't know. We know Chuck has done it, you know, so, but he has to make that conversion into UFC rules. Okay. But let's say they both have no problem doing that. Okay. Let's say, and they do it. There's no way that Bruce Lee should win that just because of the weight class difference. And this is what Michael Jai White was talking about because of the weight class, you know. And, you know, I, I believe, right, that size definitely matters, but it isn't everything because it gets to the point where a person can be too huge. So then who's the best fighter in the world? And, like, for example, at one point, you know, Hicks and Gracie was, he's not the largest, hugest guy, but he was beating guys bigger than him. You know, or, or for example, um, you know, John Jones or, you know, at, at some point I, I can name a million UFC fighters, but I felt like there's been times, there's been times where the heavyweight would not match up well against the light heavyweight. The light heavyweight may have been a better fighter, you know, um, but it, it, that all depends, you know, here, here and there. But overall, weight does have a huge significant factor. Okay. So, but once again, I don't think, I think Bruce Lee understood that because we're talking about a guy who loved boxing like crazy. So he understood weight classes are there for a reason. And he, I'm sure, sparred Chuck Norris, at least according to one account, he did. He, he did, uh, Randy Couture's manager, I believe, uh, said that he, as a kid, saw them spar, and it pretty much went the way that you expected. You know, Bruce Lee was a little bit faster, and Chuck Norris hit a little harder. You know, is what you'd expect, because Bruce Lee's lighter, so he's faster. Chuck Norris is bigger, so he's stronger, you know, kind, kind of thing. Um, but... I think Bruce Lee thought to himself after cross training with these guys, he said, in the street, how do I beat these guys? In the street with no rules, how do I beat these guys? So that's where a groin shot or an eye gouge, a spear hand to the throat, those things can change because now they're, they're, they are very weaponized. So, so that can change stuff. He, I think he understood that. And he understood that the way that he had to fight was going to be more from a distance. And I believe where he got that from is, A, you look at the Kung Fu stuff that he trained in, has the dirty moves that is not present in boxing or in uh, amateur wrestling. So he had the library for those kinds of moves that come from Kung Fu these illegal bag of tricks, these moves, right? And then he trained like a professional athlete and he studied boxing and I believe he took it old school. Like, what is the origin of boxing? And people will say, well, bare knuckle boxing. Bare knuckle boxing back in the day had a little bit of grappling and a little bit of like kicking and stuff. So when you go there, I think even that connects us into... Savat, which is French kickboxing. So now we're talking about being able to kick with boots on, right? So French kickboxing, to me, once you start doing that, you go to the origins of that, they also practice the cane, which keeps, now that goes in the direction of fencing. So when we're talking about fencing, not today's Olympic fencing, but the or origins of fencing, the, its martial roots, is the battlefield. It's the sword. It's the spear. To me, that's where it all comes from. So I believe Bruce Lee was thinking of that kind of mentality, but with his bare hands. So he was thinking battlefield, I believe. So he's, he's thinking in fencing, and he was a big proponent of, guess what, S boxing, savat, and fencing. So 
to me, when we think about how would he exactly fight and people start talking about he has no fight record, you know, I think you guys are completely not understanding him. You have to look at the big picture and, and, um, Oh, my bad. That's probably the big, you have to look at the details because <laughs> if you look at the big picture, you just go, he has no fight record. That's it. And you dismiss him easily. You know, he's just a Hollywood actor that's been overhyped. That's, that's what people think. Some people think, you know, but if you look in the details, then I think you will see, no, this guy was interested in the street. This guy trained like a pro fighter. This guy, look at the styles that he specifically chose. You know, the Wing Chun, the, the Chinese martial arts gave him the dirty bag of tricks, you know. And then the boxing, the savat, and the fencing took him back into the battlefield, which I believe gives him a very street realistic style to hit the person without risk of getting hit back, you know, and because that is the sweet science of boxing and with fencing that is a must if not we're talking about exchange of swords so um you have to play it that way so his fighting style i believe goes goes into that you know people view him more as an mma fighter today you know people go oh look he did grappling you know he did striking uh he's he's like he was MMA before MMA. Yeah, he, he was, yes. But I don't think that captures his style. So uh, something new uh, to, to maybe play around with and, and think about. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you for listening and take care, folks.